Hey everyone, welcome back to Curtis Row. I'm going to be starting up a gas series primarily in blueprints. And even though I want to do all blueprints, gas still needs some capabilities in C++ like attribute sets. So we're going to go ahead and cover that in the first video, but I do want this to be primarily in blueprints. Now I'm going to start off with a third person project in blueprint, and I'm going to call my project prime. And the reason why I'm calling it prime is because I'm going to be using this character from the marketplace from the affinity blade warriors. And it's going to be that cardboard looking dude who looks like he's made out of Amazon prime boxes. So I'll add this to my project later on, but let's go ahead and get started with the project. I'm going to try to do the C++ portion pretty quick. Um, I want this to be kind of uh, easy, fun, and I know long C++ stuff gets draining really quick. First thing I'm going to do is head over to my plugins and I want to enable gameplay abilities. So enabling gameplay abilities is our entire gas framework. It allows us to enable gameplay effects, add abilities very easily to the game and even define our attribute set. Now that our project is relaunched, I'm going to head over to tools and create a new C++ class and go to all classes. And I'm going to look for attribute set. And in this attribute set, this would not be available if you did not enable your gameplay abilities. So I'll hit next and I'll call this prime attribute set. And I'll just click public to put this in the public folder and click create class. It's going to add code to the project and launch our visual studios and just hit yes for anything that pops up. And if when your visual studios launches, it's probably going to ask you to reload all, just go ahead and click reload all. And now our visual studio will launch with our prime attribute set dot header in a C++ file. And I want to go back to my project. I'm going to go back to my project and create another C++ class and I'm going to create a character and I'll just call this prime character like so. And I'll hit create class. And this looks good to me. And then I'll hit reload all. And now before we begin adjusting any code, I want to quickly go over to my build file. On my solution explorer, I'm going to look under games, under my project name, open this up, go to source, open this up. And then under my project name once more, I'm going to click on prime.build.cs. And this will actually be whatever your project name is, .build.cs. And in here, I'm going to paste in three names, which is going to be the gameplay abilities, gameplay tags, and gameplay tasks just like this. And now these are added to our public dependency module names. This is kind of similar to enabling our gameplay abilities in our plugins folder. So I can go ahead and cancel or exit out of this file. And now in our prime attribute set.h, I just want to include the ability system component by just typing in hashtag include ability system component.h for header. And I'm going to create some macros to define our gameplay abilities. And you can just copy paste this. I'll include this below. So our attribute accessor function will pass in a class name and a property name. And we're basically going to just access this in order to do the following nodes here or the following script here. So we're going to get the property. We're going to get the value. We're going to set the value and then we're going to initialize the value. So down here below my generated body, I just want to create a public and this public just means it's accessible to anyone and anyone can use it. So I'll create this U property, which is going to be blueprint read only. And the category is going to be help. And we're going to replicate this using this function called on rep current health that we're going to create in a second. And the variable name is called current health. And now we pass in this function, which is the attribute accessors that we create up here to access this and basically just do all of these following. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the max health. Now that I have my max health set and now down here, I'll write protected and protected over here is basically like a divider in a toolbox. This is a special function that updates whenever character health changes, and it's going to ensure that it's updated and synced especially in multiplayer games. Think of it like a safety check that keeps the health information accurate for everyone. So if you have a party member, you want to make sure that you know exactly how much their HP is. And I'll do the same thing for max health. And that's pretty much all we need here. And now let's go ahead and save this and move over to our C++ file. Before we do that, you'll see that we have this squiggly line under our current health and max health. So we can just create our definition for it by clicking the screwdriver and clicking create definition for this. And it will automatically create this function for us. And now let's add a function here. So this line is an automatic alert system that notifies the game when the health value changes. It ensures everyone playing sees the correct number. And now I can just copy paste this entire function and create it for the max health. So I'll just write max health here, over here, and old max health here, and old max health here. And I'll hit save. And now I want to create a function that's going to be a list that needs to be shared with everyone in game. And this is specifically for replication or multiplayer. And now in this list, I want to pass it the data to tell everyone what's going to be shared with them. So we'll pass in the current health and the max health. And now this super is basically just calling the parent class of the get lifetime replicated props. And this is the list that we have. So it's going to send out the current health and the max health. And you're going to see some red squiggly lines is because up at the top, we didn't include our net unreal network. We didn't include our information from the header file of the unreal network. So I'm going to go ahead and include this net slash unreal network. And now these squiggly lines will go away. And now I'll head over to the prime character dot header. And in here, I need to include three things and make sure it's above this generated.header or else you will get some errors. So I'm going to include the ability system interface 
and the ability system component. And I also want to include this header from prime attribute. So I'm going to look for this prime attribute set.h in our CPP file and include it right here. And now under our characters constructor, I need to implement the interface method to return our ability system component like so. So we're going to call a virtual new ability system component, get ability system component const override. And the reason why we're having this get ability system component error is because over here at the end of this public a character, I want to add a comma and add a public I ability system interface. And now we have a green squiggly line, which will define in our C++ file of our character. And now let's go ahead and add that ability system component in our protected. So under this protected, I've added this line that's basically going to make it visible anywhere and we'll see it pop up in the components of our character. And now I want to initialize our attributes by calling our initialize attribute function. This is all we need for our prime character dot header. And now I'm just going to head over to our C++ file. So in our prime character, I need to include gameplay effects and gameplay effect extension, just like that. And now I want to initialize the ability system component by adding these three lines. So this will create our default sub object and the text will be ability system component. And we're going to set the replication to true to enable multiplayer. Now we're setting our attribute set to the create default sub object of the U prime attribute set. And this is in our character. And now I want to create a function to just return the ability system component so we can get the information from it, just like this. And that's exactly what we were calling in our header file. And now under our super begin play, we want to initialize the attributes so that we initialize them as soon as our game starts. And now the last thing we need to do is just call our function to initialize the attribute. So over here in our header, I'm going to head over to void, click on this on the screwdriver and create a definition. And at the bottom here, and now I created this initialize attributes function for us. And in this void, I'm just going to write an if statement. So if we have an ability system component and an attribute set, then currently nothing. But I'm going to include comments for you to see what you guys can do with this. But we're going to be manipulating this in Blueprint, so don't worry about this too much. And now one thing I want to do is actually set numbers to the health, to the current health and max health and so on. So in our prime attribute set C++, at the very top here, right under my includes, I'm going to call my attribute set. So I'll look for u prime attribute set, colon, colon, and then with another colon after this, I'm going to write current health and we'll set it to 100.f. And then I'll do a comma max health of the same thing. I'll do 100.f. And you'll see an error right here is because we don't have a constructor set up in our header file. In our header under our public, I'm going to call the constructor. So I'll write constructor over here, which is just going to be the name of our class attribute prime attribute set or u prime attribute set. And that's it. And now you'll see that the error goes away here. And now we're pretty much just ready to launch the project. So I'll go ahead and click on the project name and I'll clean this up. And then I'll right click and click build after this. And then I'm going to click on this local windows debugger as soon as our builds complete. And now with our project launch, I'm going to go ahead and double click to open this BP third person character. And now with this open, you'll see the parent class is currently character, but I'm going to change it to the prime character that we have. So I'm going to go to class and then change the parent class to prime character like so. And when I change it, you'll see that I've it's added in ability system component. And now down here, I'll add a simple debug key F to just print out so a string. So on F, I want to print out a string. So I'm going to do print string. So I want to get our current health and our max health. So I want to drag out get ability system component and I'll drag this out. Let me make some room so it's easier to see and zoom in a little. And I'm just going to drag this out and get gameplay attribute value. So I'm going to drag this out and look for a get gameplay attribute value node. And I'm going to get this prime attribute set dot current health. So the reason why we created this attribute set in C++ is because currently there's no way for us to reach these prime attribute sets or these attribute sets in blueprints. So now I'll just copy paste this node like so, and now I'm going to get the max health. And from our print string, I want to actually format our text. So I'll just right click and look for a format text node and connect this to the string. And for the return value of this current health, I'll just plug it in and I'll add two pins. And then I'll just delete this and reroute this return value for the current set to zero and reroute the max health to one. And now for the format, I'm just going to type in health colon. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to write zero, which we'll call whatever's connected here because this acts as our variable. And then I'll do slash, and then I'll call curly brackets in one, which we'll call our max health. Now hit compile and save. And now when I go back to my map, I can hit play. And now on the top left, when I hit F, it'll show my health 100 out of 100, just like that. And that's a very simple tutorial on how to set up ability system component and your attributes in C++. Now for the rest of the video, I do want to only do blueprint stuff, but we will definitely have to go back and set a few more attributes such as strength, stamina, mana, and so on. And now let me add my prime character to make this, to make this, to make this first video pretty complete. I'm going to head over to the Unreal Marketplace and just add this Infinity Blade Warriors to my project called Prime. And now all I did was just change the mannequin with this cardboard character. Um, this isn't how he's supposed to run around. It's yeah. So in the next video, we'll go over creating an animation blueprint just to pick this up. 
But yeah, if you hit F, you can see your health, current health, and maximum health pop up, which is awesome. We got our attribute system working, and we're already starting to work with the gameplay ability system. Setup is a little slow because it's mostly C++, but starting now, we'll be primarily doing things in Blueprint. Thanks for watching Coders Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for setting up our gas project with me, and yeah, see you guys soon. If you support what I do, check out my Patreon below, and yeah, feel free to join the Discord if you have any problems with this project.